Hi there, it's Tiffany from Daisy Farm Crafts and today I want to show you this tutorial for our mesh stitch blanket with a really pretty shell border. Now this is one of the very first blankets I designed for Daisy Farm Crafts back in like probably four years ago. And when I was just starting out and I didn't even know how to record on YouTube. And since then, this yarn I used, which was an Isaac Mizrahi yarn I found at Michael's, is no longer available. So I'm just going to have to substitute today with my strawberry and some heather gray from Karen Simply Soft line. It's a little bit heavier weight. This was made with a three weight, but so if you can find this yarn, but the stitches are the same and... Um, I'm really sad that he isn't making this yarn because it is super, super nice. But anyway, I'm using an H hook today and I'll just get you started on the tutorial. Since this is a fairly beginner friendly pattern, I'm gonna go ahead and take you through some of the basics just in case I've got some beginners here that need to know, you know, or just watch me start this slip knot and how to get your chain going. Also, um, yeah, and if you are a beginner, just don't be afraid to try this, this pattern because it really is simple and you don't be afraid of that shell border either. Okay, so all you do for the mesh stitch is you're gonna go ahead and start with an even number of chains on your hook. And I'm just gonna start with, and you know, I'll, I'm just gonna do a sample swatch for you which I also suggest if you're a beginner, just start here and, and get the hang of this before you start the real blanket. So we're just gonna do any even number, and I'm thinking about 14 would be great. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 15, so here's 16. Okay, so we'll just start with 16 chains. And what you're going to do is start with a single crochet in the second chain from the hook. So here's our first chain right here. Here's our second chain. And we'll just go ahead and start by inserting our hook underneath the top loop, yarning over, pulling that loop back through, yarning over again, and pulling through two loops. That is a single crochet. Now you're just going to yarn over again and do one chain. Then you will skip the next chain and work into the next chain with a single crochet. So insert your hook, yarn over and pull that through, yarn over again and pull through two. And hopefully you're able to see that. Now just repeat that pattern clear across the row where right after you work a single crochet, just work a chain one, skip one, and work into the next space. Okay, so I'm gonna let you go and you get that and I'll show you how to turn at the end of the row. All right, how'd you do? I've got my, your very last stitch should have been a single crochet into that space, into that last chain space. Now you're just gonna simply chain one and turn your work towards you like the page in a book. And now you're going to work a single crochet into the top of that last single crochet you just made. So if you look at it, you will be going under the second loop from the hook, the second chain space, the second little V, however you wanna call it. That's where you'll want to insert your hook. Sometimes I find in patterns that's the most confusing thing is where to start the row and where is your last stitch. Okay, now we're just gonna chain one again and we're gonna skip that chain one space and work into the single crochet and repeat that across the row. Now for this pattern, we will work this six, six rows of this and then we'll change colors. So I think I'll get my six rows all worked and then I'll come back and I'll show you 
how to add that new color. And be patient with yourself. Look at how I'm even struggling with this tiny little swatch. Once you get more rows, you have something to hang on to, it becomes a lot easier. So don't give up if you're a total beginner. Just keep practicing and you'll get it. Okay? Because even I just, it's awkward at first. There's not much to hang on to. Okay, do your six rows. And even like I say, even you're going to end the row with a single crochet, chain one, and turn. All right, I'll meet you back. All right, one little tip I want to give you so you know that you've done six rows is that your little tail from the starting will be over here before you finish the row. Sometimes it's really hard to count these. Another idea is to just is to use stitch markers if you wanted to, but I kind of just like keeping track of the tail and then you can kind of eyeball. eyeball. You would know if you had eight rows, it would look definitely thicker. Okay, I didn't finish that last single crochet because this is how you add in a new color, is that you simply just lay the new color over your hook Kind of give yourself a little bit of a long tail and pull it through. That's all you do. And then on this blanket, I am probably going to show you how to carry this yarn up the side because the border will cover it and that will save you so much on weaving in ends. Okay, just start with a chain one, turn your work and repeat that pattern for six rows. Insert your hook right there under that first single crochet stitch. Work your single crochet in your chains. Just like that. Okay. So I will get another six rows worked and probably Get another six rows after that so that I can have enough of a sample swatch to show you how to get the simple shell border started. So keep practicing. This is a cute, cute blanket. All right, I'll meet you back in just a little while. Okay, I know that I've just worked this sixth row because here's my tail over on this side. And in this pink ones, I guess it's just a tiny bit easier to kind of count, but it still is tricky. Just kind of keep an eye on that tail. So I wanted to show you what it means to carry yarn up the side. Remember, I didn't cut the gray. And all it really means is, is that instead of, you know, cutting it and laying it over, it's already there. And I just bring it up behind lay it over and kind of, I guess the tricky thing would be to just make sure you've got, you know, don't pull it too tight, obviously. Just kind of get it to lay really nice and flat along the side. And then we'll go back over it and it really won't show at all. And I do feel like it offers you just a little bit more secure, but if you don't like this way and you really don't want, I mean, I will say the the gray probably will peek through just a bit on that, you know, but the shell mostly will cover it up. But if that bothers you, you're a perfectionist, you do not need to carry yarn up the sides. You can weave them in after you're done. But if you like to save a little bit of time and weaving ends is not your favorite, then go ahead. This is a great way. And I have, I've done this on lots of my projects with about that and you know, the border covers it up and you really don't see it. So I just want to make sure you can see what I'm doing here, just like that. And now I'm going to start that mesh stitch again. It's such a pretty, pretty little stitch. Love it so much. Okay, I will get working again and then I think that I will come back and I'll show you though, because we, we have these little tails to weave in. A couple, you know, of the starting one and this first one when we changed to the pink. And I'll show you how to weave those in if you've never seen that before either. And then we'll get working on that shell border. Okay. 
All right, I'm on my last stitch and I just saw other things as I was sitting here. As a beginner, you know, you'll see on your pattern sometimes fasten off. And all that really means is to just pull through on that last stitch, pull a big loop out and go ahead and clip it like that and then pull that out. And you've kind of fastened off the loop. At least that's how I've been taught and that's what I think it means. Okay, I'm gonna grab a tapestry needle and okay, we're gonna go ahead and cut off this peach to, or the pink too, and I'll show you how I weave in the ends. Okay, so this is a tapestry needle. It has a really large eye and a really a blunt tip. And all you're going to do is thread one of the ends through the end, obviously, of the needle. And you just take your time weaving the needle in and out of the stitches. And you can go in and through any stitch that you want. You just kind of want to disguise them and kind of go back and forth. Kind of get it out here, just like that. There's really no wrong way or right way. I, I would say that my only suggestion is, is to do enough weaving in so that it's really um, secure. So that's basically all you're gonna do. And obviously, you know, weave the color into the same color. And then when you're through, and this probably is about enough, that's why I probably should have left a slightly longer tail, but it's okay just to show you. But no, that's about, that was about right. Well, the reason why I like longer is so that when you get to the very end, you have a little bit more to work with to cut off. But anyway, all you do then is like say, pull through the last one and clip it close to the fabric, the clo you know, that you made, and that's it. And then they're kind of hidden in there. So I will um, go ahead and weave in these other ends and then we will get that border started. Okay, I have all those ends woven in, but I wanna just tell you one thing why I do love doing sample swatches is that even just I've discovered, you know, I play with it and mess with it and I'd made that base chain probably way too loose. And look at how it's all saggy down there. So in my real blanket, I'm going to consider switching to either a G hook and do that base chain, or I, I really probably should have done those chains just a little bit tighter because they're just, you know, kind of too big down there. Look at when you get your full blanket done, you, I want the tension to be the same. So another reason why I love sample swatches. So you can just kind of learn about what the stitch is going to do. Okay, so here's our yarn that was carried up the side. Everything is ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and work. And we're gonna work as if we just chained and turned. I like to start in those corners. So what I mean is, you know, if we were, this is how we were stitching, that you can tell with those Vs. So I turn them so that they're kind of going the opposite way as if I would have chained and turned, if that makes sense. And I'll go ahead and I will stick my hook into that last space. Now I'm gonna work around each stitch with a single crochet. Okay, so I hope you saw that. And then I'm, I'll just chain one right there and into that space, I kind of pull that one tight. I'll go ahead and I will work that first single crochet. Just like that. Now I'll go across and I will work in each stitch, keeping in mind some of them, oh yes, that's are the chains, spaces. So you'll work into the single crochet, but you'll also work into the chain space. Just like that. And when I get to the corner, I'm gonna work three single crochets. So we're gonna do one full round of single crochet. And when we get to the sides of the blanket, 
you're going to try really hard to keep it as even as possible working one per row but this is where all crocheters have a problem i have i mean i lots of people complain and it is hard to evenly space your single crochets down the side of the blanket it takes a lot of practice and a lot of undoing and redoing here i am in the corner one two three And I'm just going to start working down those sides. Sides are a little bit stretchier, and so that's why I think it's so hard to get them just even. But I am trying to just find the sides of the row and work one per row. It's a good uh, guideline. So it's the goal, I guess you would say. All right, I'm going to finish going down the sides and look I've kind of got it if that third one you know counts as one two three four five six you know remember we did do six rows so that's a good another good way is to just kind of count per the color stripe make sure you're doing six like that okay you don't need to see me keep doing this I will finish and then I'll show you the next round all right, I've worked around and I'm on these final stitches and I want you to know that when you get back to that corner stitch, go ahead and just work two single crochets in there because that one, first one that we worked counts as the first one of the corner. So get that worked in there and then you're going to do what's called slip stitch, which is just inserting your hook underneath, pulling back through. just like that, a slip stitch. And then chain one, and you're gonna to wanna to turn. Okay, now we're just going to work a single crochet right away into that stitch again. Just kinda of like that. We're going to skip the next stitch, and let's get our first shell going. And these are five double crochets worked all into one stitch. So you have yarn over, yarn over, you know, pull back through, yarn over, pull through two, and then pull through two. Yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two. We're going to do that a total of five times. All into the same stitch. That was four. Here's your fifth one. Now we're going to skip this stitch and work a single crochet into the next stitch. And it kind of, um, I like how it, you know, it kind of brings your shell down, but yet kind of makes it poofy. I don't know. Some people have you skip two, or not some people, some patterns I've seen have you skip two. I just chose to skip one. So personal preference. If you want your shells spread out a little bit more, you can do that. So I'm going to skip one, work my five double crochets into this one. And I like to make sure that first one kind of lays over that way so that I don't get a, a horrible gap in those stitches. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so skip one, and you could skip two is what I'm saying. If you wanted them kind of more flat like that, but I liked them a little bit more round. That's the difference, if you can see it. It does not really matter. Skip one again, work those five double crochets. I'm going to work down around the corner and I'm going to give you options on the corner. You kind of, this is where I feel like you get to be in control of these shells. There's, use your best judgment to, you know, to get them around the corner. 
Okay, I will, look how cute they are. Okay, I'll keep working and then I'll show you. All right, I'm about to work this last corner, but I'm just gonna tell you that actually I did nothing different. It just kind of works out. I mean, obviously you're not gonna always get a shell around the corners, but it just generally will look okay. This actually ended up being a single crochet in this corner. But I just kept the pattern going. There was nothing extra I needed to do. I didn't need to do like like the row before, how we put three single crochets in the corner. I didn't. So this is another one of those corners where I'm just gonna skip one and the single crochet is gonna land right here in that first single crochet. And then I'm gonna just skip one and I'm gonna still continue with my double crochets. And it really just looks just fine. And here's what I mean about getting that double crochet to lean over that way. If it leans back, you get this string that that it, it just pulled too much and then your double crochet's got this big gap. And that's what I was trying to explain earlier. Sometimes my brain works ahead of my when I what I can say. So just to show you again, I'm yarning over. Here is my double crochet. And I like to lean it over that direction and try to minimize that loop that forms, you know, because the shell leans that way. Just, just another little tip that I have learned as I keep crocheting along. So I'm going to crochet down this, um, you know, continue working this shell border and I'll show you how to slip stitch and then you are on your way. And I hope your swatch works out so that you can learn, you know, about your own tension and be able to um, make a beautiful, beautiful blanket. So, okay, hold on. Let me finish this and I'll come right back. All right, here's where I, it, there's no way that, you know, it will end up perfectly even. Look, I've got three stitches left. But that's okay because I think I will just slip stitch to this first one and it really will look fine. So this is where, you know, do your best, use your best judgment. There is no perfect way, but I think you can get it to still look pretty good no matter how you ended your blanket. And that is the gist of it. Isn't that the cutest thing ever? Okay, let me just show you the original blanket and gosh, I hope you can... You know, using, this was a three weight yarn. Gosh, if you, you, you could find that weight, it is just such, it is super great weight to work with. Darling, darling. But I don't mind the Karen Simply Soft either. That turned out really cute too. Just not as, I don't know, drapey, I guess. Dra the drape is a little bit different. This would be probably a little stiffer with Karen Simply Soft. So but anyway, all great, all beautiful projects. Thank you so much for coming by Daisy Farm Crafts and for being patient with us as I continue to learn how to share my blankets with you on YouTube. We started as a website. That's where all my patterns are, daisyfarmcrafts.com. And of course, we love to share your work on Instagram and we love the community there. We did just start a Facebook group called Daisy Farm Crafters. And that is a place where you can go and get specific help from other people in the community who have made these blankets, especially our gingham blankets. And you can probably have your question answered a lot faster than if you emailed me. In the past, I was able to answer emails, but oh my word, we have grown like crazy. We have over 200,000 followers on Pinterest now, almost 100,000 on Instagram, and it, and then, you know, and we love you all and wish so badly we could help you all. So I'm glad I've learned YouTube so that I can at least show you some of the projects that we're making. All right, you go have a good day.